Ernesto Marín will present for the thermal digital locking shadow graph tech techniques for material uh, uh, thermal characterization. And after, after that, after coffee break, uh, we will have the first lecture of uh, thermal lens spectroscopy by Professor Marcano uh, from Delaware. I think we will have 30 minutes uh, in advance today, the, the, the coffee break. And in the afternoon, in the afternoon, we have uh, the experimental session. We have some change today. I will announce now. Uh, group one, two, and three in Adriatico with uh, Professor Angel Cifuentes. We'll have processing, data processing about uh, shadow graph method. Group four, five, and six in MLAB. We have there three, four experiments today. Please be uh, 10 minutes before two here in the lobby. Go there. <coughs> now, Professor Marin, you can start. Thank you, Humberto, for the presentation. In my second lecture, I will tell you about a one recently developed method for thermal characterization of materials. Uh, you know something about this technique because yesterday uh, Angel uh, talked about, about that in the lab. I will divide my, my presentation in three main points. In the first one, I will remember some concepts uh, from the yesterday lecture. In the second one, I, I want to speak about the photothermal beam uh, deflection technique. Uh, and in the last point, uh, I will talk to you about the photothermal shadow graph uh, method, in particular, about the basic theory uh, behind the method and some experimental details and results. What are the, the photothermal techniques? Suppose that we have a sample uh, and, and we have uh, an amplitude modulated uh, light beam, part of the energy of the incident light can be absorbed by the sample and part of the absorbed energy can be transformed into heat uh, by means of a non-radiative uh, recombination or desexcitation processes uh, so that heat is developed because the, the the incident radiation is periodically modulated. You obtain uh, temperature oscillations that are called uh, thermal waves. Uh, you can measure these thermal waves directly using appropriate uh, thermometers, but you can also measure them uh, indirectly, uh, measuring the changes that the, the thermal waves produce in other material properties and in properties of the medium surrounding the sample. Uh, for example, you can generate acoustic waves. Uh, this is the basis of the photoacoustic method. Uh, you, you, you can measure the infrared radiation emitted by the heat sample. You can also make the changes in, in the optical reflectivity of the sample produced by heating or the superficial uh, expansion of the sample. Uh, but uh, in the photothermal beam deflection and, and related techniques such as the shadow graph method, what we measure is the changes in the refractive index of the, of the sample of the surrounding medium 
uh, due to, to the heating. In, in the next uh, lecture, Professor Marcano will uh, speak about the photothermal lens spectroscopy method, and next week, Professor Franco will uh, speak about the uh, photothermal lens microscopy method. Today, we will deal with the uh, photothermal beam deflection technique or also called mirage uh, uh, technique. There are three main mechanisms involved in the generation of the photothermal signal. Uh, the first one uh, is the, the optical absorption. Uh, optical absorption is related with optical of the material. For example, the optical absorption coefficient, the optical reflectivity, transmittance, and so on. Uh, so that you can design one experiment uh, uh, to do a spectroscopy using the photothermal uh, techniques. This is because the optical properties are wavelength uh, dependent uh, properties. Uh, in the second place, you have a process of light, absorbed light energy into heat conversion. And this process uh, can depend on different properties uh, of the sample and also of the kind of sample. But in general, you can define a quantum efficiency for the energy conversion process as the quotient of the generated heat and the absorber optical energy. In this way, you can also design an experiment to measure this parameter and other related properties. Then you generate heat, and the heat will diffuse through the sample in a process that depends on the thermal properties of the sample, we will see later uh, what are the, the, thermal, the, the main pre, uh, thermal properties uh, involved in the process of heat diffusion. And you can uh, have also other processes, for example, generation of acoustic waves, uh, as in, in the photoacoustic technique, uh, etc. These mechanisms uh, are the, the motivation uh, to use the the, the photothermal effect for material uh, characterization. For example, for measurement of the thermal properties of, of materials. Which are the thermal properties involved in, in heat transfer processes? Uh, the, the most uh, known uh, thermal property uh, is perhaps the thermal conductivity of the, of the material. The thermal conductivity is the proportionality factor between the head flux density flowing across a sample uh, due to a gradient of temperature. Um, uh, this relationship is given by the law of Fourier of heat conduction. And, and, and this, is, uh, this, this law describes uh, an stationary uh, process. There is not any time derivative in the Fourier uh, law. Uh, then, the, the thermal conductivity is related to the thermal diffusivity through this uh, equation. The thermal diffusivity is the quotient uh, between the thermal conductivity and the product of mass density and specific heat. The specific heat uh, is uh, defined by the first law of thermodynamic uh, through a, an static relationship. In this relationship, uh, A is the generated energy in a sample of mass M due to an increase in its delta T in, in its temperature. Uh, and this is a static equation because there, is not, uh, there, there are no time or spatial derivatives uh, uh, of time or position uh, involved. The product of the density and the specific heat gives us the, the specific, the volumetric heat capacity of a sample. Uh, I told you yesterday that uh, the specific heat capacity is an almost constant uh, 
uh, has a, an almost constant value uh, for, for an example. This is because uh, its definition. It is defined as the product of, of density and a specific heat. A specific heat is a measurement of, of the, the energy uh, developed in, in, in a sample. So that if the density of the sample increase, then uh, the, the, uh, the specific heat capacity becomes lower. And when, when the density of a material is lowering, then the, the specific heat, the capacity of the sample to, to store energy will higher, so that the product remains constant, almost constant. Uh, this is also, a, a, as, a, as a, I talked to, uh, yesterday, a, a consequence of the Dulong and Petit, uh, and Petit law, law for the molar heat capacity of, of, of solids at ordinary temperatures. Epsilon is the thermal effusivity. Uh, it is given by the square root of the product of a specific heat capacity and thermal conductivity of the materials. Uh, this, this parameter uh, plays a role when we have heat transport phenomena in the presence of arm, periodical harmonic heat sources. And, and the thermal effusivity is responsible uh, for what happens at the surface of the heated sample or at interfaces between uh, regions with different thermal uh, properties. The, the thermal diffusivity is the main parameter involved in the non-stationary homogeneous heat diffusion equation. Uh, this equation, this is the, the, the Laplacian of the temperature field, the, the second uh, spatial derivative, and, and this is the, the, the first time derivative of the, of the temperature field. So uh, this is non, uh, a non-stationary equation. Okay? Uh, therefore, the importance of alpha is that it is the parameter uh, that appears when we are in the presence of non-stationary uh, heat transfer uh, processes. These are two tables showing the, the values of thermal properties for different materials. You must take care that uh, this means that, the, that these are values that are multiplied by 10 to the 6, okay? Uh, in this graph, we can see that the thermal diffusivity values of matter span approximately five orders of magnitude uh, from 10 to the, approximately 10 to the minus one for, for liquid samples uh, to, uh, thousands of, of, of quadrat millimeters per second for, for very good heat conductors such as diamond that is here. Uh, the, the thermal conductivity uh, shows a linear relationship with the thermal diffusivity and this is due to the constancy of the C value uh, about which I have talked uh, talk uh, before. Um, you can have material, for example, ga ga gas samples, with a very small values of the thermal conductivity, but the thermal diffusivity of gases can be similar to the thermal conductivity of solids. Okay? And uh, both thermal conductivity and thermal diffusivity uh, are properties that uh, depend uh, strongly on the structure of the, of the materials, uh, on doping, uh, etc. so that you can use these materials, uh, the, these properties, to characterize the, the, the consequence of, of doping, materials treatment, heat, uh, treatment, etc. On, on, the, on the samples. This, uh, an, uh, the same uh, linear relationship can be found if we plot the, 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 the quadrat of the, of the thermal effusivity uh, as a function of the thermal conductivity because 
uh, also here, the, the proportionality factor is the specific heat capacity of, of the materials. Uh, materials with high values of the thermal conductivity have also very high values of the thermal eff effusivity. Okay? Um, how can we describe the, the thermal waves and what are the, the main properties of these uh, waves? Uh, suppose that, that we have a, a semi-infinite sample uh, and that mo uh, intensity modulated radiation is absorbed, absorbed at the surface of the sample. Uh, suppose that we have only a superficial a head source in the, in the material. You can solve the heat diffusion equation uh, with the properly boundary condition. In this case, the continuity of the, uh, of the energy flux at the surface of the sample. And, and, and so you obtain uh, this kind of solution for, the, for this equation. In, in this uh, equation for the temperature field, uh, E0 is the, the intensity of the uh, incident light. I have also supposed a, 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 a conversion efficiency equal 1 for this process. Epsilon is the, the thermal effusivity. Omega is the, the angular light modulation frequency. Um, mu is the so-called thermal diffusion length given by the square root of the quotient of two times the thermal diffusivity and the angular modulation frequency. In, uh, this equation is similar to the equation that describes other kinds of waves. Uh, and, and you can uh, define in this equation an amplitude, T0, given by, by this uh, factor enclosed in, into the ellipse, and uh, we can def define a, a phase lag uh, given by, by this equation. Both the amplitude and the, and the phase of the thermal wave equation depend on the thermal diffusion length, and the thermal diffusion length can be varied by changing the light modulation frequency. Uh, this is a graphical representation of the amplitude of the, of the thermal wave as a function of the distance, uh, also for one-dimensional uh, heat transport. And we can see uh, that the thermal diffusion length uh, is the length at which the amplitude, the, the surfa superficial amplitude of the thermal wave decreases in times. Okay? Uh, so that the thermal wave is highly, uh, uh, highly uh, attenuated wave uh, uh, with uh, goes to zero in approximately one thermal wavelength that is proportional to, to the thermal diffusion, diffusion length. Using the, the thermal diffusion length concept, we can define a, a thermal, what is a thermal is sick and a thermally thin uh, sample. A thermally thick uh, sample, or a sample that is opaque to thermal waves propagating through, through it, uh, is a sample for which its thickness is much greater than the thermal diffusion length. Okay? Uh, this kind of sample can be uh, approxima uh, approximately be a, a semi-infinite sample. And a thermally thin sample is that for which the thickness is much lower than the thermal diffusion length. This is similar to a sample that be, is transparent uh, for thermal waves. The, the thermal wave equation is the, the basic for, 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 for the 
for a method for thermal characterization of materials using the so-called slope method. Uh, I have evaluated here the thermal wave equation at a given distance from the head source, namely L. Okay? Uh, and in this equation, we can see that the, the plot of the logarithm of the amplitude times the square root of the, of the modulation frequency as a function of the, modul of the square root of the modulation frequency or a plot of the phase as a function of the, root of, of the square root of the modulation frequency become stretch lines. And the slope of these stretch lines uh, has this value and is related with, uh, with the thermal diff diffusivity of the, of the sample. So that if we know uh, the distance at, uh, from the head source at which the, the measurement is performed, then we can obtain for, from this slope the value of the thermal diffusivity. Okay? Uh, not always the temperature can be measured directly. Sometimes we, what is measured is something that is proportional to the temperature uh, value, so that we have a proportionality factor or instrumental factor that can be frequency dependent. In this case, we cannot use uh, this method as it is for thermal characterization. We need to use some procedures to account for the uh, frequency dependent instrumental factor. A, a method that becomes independent of this instrumental factor is that in which instead of the measure, or, or instead of measuring of the temperature as a function of the light modulation frequency, what is changed is the distance uh, from the head source. If we plot the, the, the amplitude as a function of, of the distance in a semi-logarithm scale, then we become a stretch line whose slope is given by this equation. And if we plot the phase lag as a function of L, we also obtain a stretch line with the same slope. So that if the line modulation frequency is known, then we can obtain the thermal diffusivity from this kind of, 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 of plot. And I repeat, this is the, the, the basis of, the, of several methods for measurement of thermal diffusivity using photothermal uh, methods. And one of these techniques is the uh, mirage technique or photothermal beam deflection technique. This technique is based uh, in the mirage effect uh, that is uh, illustrated here. Uh, when you hit uh, a solid surface, then the, the medium surround, uh, surrounding the, the sample will also hit it, and the refractive index change, so that uh, an incident uh, light beam uh, will, uh, the intensity of, of, of an incident light beam uh, can change, and you observe effects uh, such as, as that. Uh, this is the basis of the beam deflection technique. In this technique, uh, you have a sample, you have a, a, a light beam, a, 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 an intensity mod, a modulated light beam that is uh, focused uh, onto the sample, and part of the energy of this light, light beam is absorbed and hits the, the sample locally. Yes. Uh, then the heat generated in the sample will diffuse into the surrounding medium and, and heat this medium. Uh, and as a consequence, the refractive index of this medium will be also changed because there is a, a linear relationship between the changes in the refractive index and the temperature changes of, of the medium. The medium is here denoted by gamma. Yes? And this coefficient is the photothermal parameter, uh, giving uh, the, uh, the, the amount of change in the refractive index 
for a given a temperature a variation. And this is a, a parameter that is, that is a characteristic for, for different solids. <coughs> for, for air, a, this parameter is a very small when compared a, with that corresponding to liquid samples. So that in order to amplify a, the, the beam deflection effect, generally the, the sample is immersed in a medium, in a liquid medium, with a, a high a photothermal parameter. And for example, ethanol uh, and other uh, solvents. Uh, then then you, you have here a, a, a gradient of the refractive index. And if we shine another uh, laser beam parallel to the sample surface, this light beam uh, will be deflected due to the periodical changes in the refractive index. And the deflection can take place in both directions, in the uh, normal direction, in the direction perpendicular to the sample sub surface, but also in the transversal direction. And uh, measuring, of, uh, measuring this uh, displacement of the, of the, of the beam, uh, or, or, or the the, the, deflection, the, the magnitude of the, of the deflection of the beams will be proportional to the temperature, to the created temperature field in the, in the sample surrounding medium. So that measuring the, these changes, the, this displacement, we can uh, obtain the thermal parameters of, of the sample using the, the, the slope method. Uh, here we have a punctual head source, not a uniform head source, uh, as I have described it before. For this configuration, we can also solve the heat diffusion equations, and we obtain for the temperature distribution in the, in the medium surrounding the sample the following equation. Here, P0 is the, 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 uh, the, the density of the uh, incident light energy, the, the subindex S denotes the sample, and gamma denotes the surrounding medium. K is the thermal conductivity. J is the J zero is the, the Bessel function of, of first order. Uh, delta is the integration parameter. Uh, beta is a parameter given by this expression. Uh, here is the, the the inverse of of the uh, thermal diffusion length. This parameter here, alpha is the thermal diffusivity, omega is the, the angular light modulation frequency. Uh, and using this equation, we can also calculate the magnitude of the deflection, the transversal and the perpendicular deflection that are given by these equations. Here appears the, the coefficient, the photothermal parameter given by this equation and the refractive index of, of the medium. This equation will be uh, only valid if the thermal conductivity uh, and, of course, the thermal diffusivity of the sample are greater than the thermal parameters of the, of the medium surrounding the, the sample. Uh, if we plot the, the phase of the transversal component of the, of the beam deviation, uh, as a function of the pump laser to prop a laser offset, the distance, uh, for example, here is the excitation, the, the head source, and, and the, the probe beam uh, pass at different distances from this point, and, and we can measure the, the phase of the of the signal at different distances of the excitation point. If we plot this the phase as a function of the distance, we become a stretch line uh, whose slope is related to the thermal uh, diffusivity of the sample as explained uh, before. We can also uh, measure the, the perpendicular uh, component, but, but this component is uh, more uh, influenced 
by, by the thermal properties of the surrounding fluid. Okay. Um, normally, wa, wa, uh, we work with, with the transversal deviation. This technique, like uh, uh, all techniques, uh, has some limitations. For example, a flat sample surface is highly uh, desired. Uh, the alignment is very difficult to, to do. Uh, and the, the procedure can be lengthy because we, we must repeat the measurement at different distances from the, from the heating point. Uh, and if we want to have many points uh, for, for that data processing, then the procedure can be very, very lengthy. This can be overcome uh, using several probings. For example, uh, using a diffraction grating, we can uh, produce several light beams uh, from, from, from the probing, uh, and then we can measure uh, the displacement of all these beams uh, simultaneously. Yeah? Uh, for example, uh, we have done an experiment in which uh, we project uh, the, 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 the multiple beams on, onto a screen, and with a web camera, we, we film uh, how uh, the beams uh, are deviated due to the, to the heating. And we have done that using a, a Logitech webcam. This is a very inexpensive uh, webcam with these uh, characteristics. And this is a video of of what results. Uh, the, the, the blue spot is a reflection of the boom beam, okay? It's only a reflection uh, to, to see that, that the beam is uh, intensity periodically uh, modulated, and, and each of these points correspond to the different probings, okay? And, and we see that the deviation is uh, greatest at, at the center, here is the, the, the heating point, and then the crest when, when we, we go uh, away from, from this point. This, this video can be processed digitally uh, to obtain uh, the phase of the signal, and we can plot the phase of the signal as a function of the distance. Uh, to do that, uh, we must use the, the locking amplifier uh, uh, method, okay? Uh, I have told uh, yesterday about uh, this method. Uh, the locking method allows to uh, recover the useful signal uh, from a very noisy uh, signal, in essence. And this is an example of such a measurement. This is a, a measurement performed in a bulk sample of uh, cadmium telluride, a semiconductor sample. And uh, this is uh, the plot of the phase as a function of the, of the distance. Uh, here, the, the, the heating point is at zero. And uh, the, the strike, we will become also a stretch line if we measure it in this direction, OK? This is a symmetrical uh, curve. And from the slope and knowing the, the light modulation frequency, uh, we can obtain the thermal diffusivity value. These are uh, preliminary results in different materials. Uh, and the reported uh, values showing a, a very good agreement. This uh, work was presented in the International Conference of Heat Transfer, Fluid Mechanics, and Thermodynamics. Uh, in, the past, in the past year. 
Uh, the multi-beam deflection method overcome the, 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 this um, limitation of the photothermal beam deflection, but we have still other limitation uh, with, this, with this method. No? The alignment of the probe beams with the sample is still difficult, and we need the flat sample surface, among others. I will talk now about the, the shadow graph method with which we, we tried to overcome these remaining uh, limitations. A shadow graph technique is not new. It is it's, it's a photographic technique that is widely used, for example, in, in, in fluid mechanics, aerodynamic studies of, of heat convection effects, uh, among others, and, 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 and the, the goal of our work uh, was to demonstrate that the shadow graph method uh, can be useful to detect the refractive index perturbations uh, produced in a, in a sample in, the, in experiments like the photothermal beam deflection method. What are the the, the equations uh, behind the, the shadow graph uh, method. Uh, the, the, the principal thing is also the dependence of the refractive index from the temperature. Uh, for a given temperature change, we, we become a change in the refractive index given by this equation, and the NDT is the photothermal uh, coefficient. Uh, suppose that we have a sample, the sample is heated, and we project and expand a light beam uh, so that uh, we can project an image of the sample onto a shadow located behind the, the sample. The, the governing equation for this effect is, is this one. Here, E0 is the intensity of the incident light, E is, is the intensity of the, of the light beam at the shadow. L is the, the, the distance be, uh, between the sample and the screen. There is a dimensional parameter. I will not enter into details about this parameter here. And N is the refractive uh, index. Uh, because the, the refractive index uh, depends on the temperature, uh, we can uh, use the dependence of the refractive index from the temperature to obtain how the, the shadow graph pattern will be modified due to the periodical temperature changes induced in the, in the, in the sample. And, and this is a basic configura configuration, uh, the, the experimental setup for this technique. Uh, here, uh, this is the sample. Uh, this is the excitation light beam, a pump beam. Uh, this is a, a, an intensity modulated light beam that is focused in, into the sample. Uh, and here we have the probe beam that pass through the sample and the shadow of the sample is projected onto the screen and can be uh, filmed using a, a camera. These are computational simulation of, the, of this effect. Uh, this is the, the behavior of the, of the phase of the shadow graph signal as a function of the distance from the hitting point, from the hitting point. And, and this simulation has been performed for a, a sample with this value of the thermal diffusivity, 10 to the minus 5 uh, quadrant meter per second, uh, and is performed here for a thermally thin sample and here for a thermally thick sample. Uh, in, uh, from these images, we take the, the values uh, closest to the sample surface, 
and we, and we plot the phase of the signal as a function of the distance for different modulation frequencies. And then uh, we, we, we do L squares linear fit to these curves to compare the obtained value of the thermal diffusivity and compare them with the value used in these simulations in order to obtain the estimation error uh, by comparing the, these, these values. And, and the, we obtain several results. Uh, one of them is that for very low modulation frequencies, uh, the error becomes greater. Uh, so that uh, the, the selection of the, mo of the light modulation frequency is a very important step in, in, this, in this kind of experiments. Uh, and the higher value of the modulation frequency that can be used uh, depends, will depend on the uh, frame rate of the, of the camera you see, you see for, the, for the detection. These are the results obtained by, by the simulations. This is an scheme of the, again, of the experiment. This is the sample. This is the pump beam. Uh, these circuits represent the, the, the gradient of the refractive index changes produced by, by the heating. Here is the probe beam, a set of collimating lenses. Uh, and here is projected a shadow of the, of the sample. And this shadow will be dis, di, disturbed due to the refractive index uh, changes. We have done two kinds of experiments. One of them uh, using a, a thermographic camera working in the rare infrared ratio of the, of the electromagnetic spectrum around one micrometer. Uh, this is a, a free camera. It's a very expensive uh, camera. I don't know in Europe, but in Mexico, this is the cost given by, by, the, by the vendors of this, of this kind of camera. This is in Mexican pesos, three millions of, of Mexican pesos. Uh, and and with, uh, for, for this experiment, of course, the probe laser must be in the, also in the infrared region, and we use a 905 nanometer wavelength diode laser. And in another experiment, we use a very inexpensive webcam, a computer webcam, uh, working in the visible part of the, of the spectrum. The cost is, is uh, orders of magnitude below. Uh, and here, the, uh, the, the probe laser was a visible diode laser, 630 uh, nanometer wavelength. The pump laser in both cases was a visible laser, 405 uh, nanometer wavelength and 250 milliwatts nominal power. Uh, the value of, of, the, of the light power on, on, uh, that, that reaches the sample is not important for the calculation of the thermal properties. Uh, the sample is placed within a one centimeter, cubic centimeter uh, glass cell and is immersed in acetonitril, acetonitril a solvent with high uh, photothermal parameter. And the experimental setup, setup is similar as that described before. And this, this is the, the experimental results obtained using the linear infrared camera, the thermographic camera. Uh, here are the results of, of the theoretical simulation for comparison. You can see that, that the experimental results are very similar to, to that predict, predicted by, by the theory. Uh, uh, this is the, the phase of the signal that is obtained. Uh, in, in the case of the, uh, I forgot, uh, of the near infrared camera, uh, this camera has uh, integrated locking capabilities so that uh, in the measurement we obtain directly the amplitude and the phase of the, of the signal. Uh, this is the, the the, the phase of the signal, uh, here in the center is the, the heating point, and you see that the behavior is symmetrical 
similar both sides of the heating point. And here are uh, results measured only at one size to obtain a, a great uh, quantity of points for different samples, uh, copper, uh, um, plum, less selenite, and, and zinc. Uh, from the slopes of these curves, uh, we calculate the thermal diffusivity values, and, and they are shown in, in this table together with literature values for comparison. Okay? The agreement is also uh, very well. Uh, and these are results obtained with the inexpensive webcam for a, a platinum filament. Here the, the sample was a, a filament of platinum. Uh, uh, the heating point is, is here at zero. This is the, the face image. Uh, in this case, the camera has no looking possibilities incorporated, but uh, we, we have done a, a data processing. Uh, Angel Cifuentes will talk uh, today in the afternoon about the way to, to process this kind of images. And, and from, from the face images, we obtain a curve of the face as a function of the distance. And from the slope, we obtain the thermal diffusivity uh, value of the, of the sample. As the conclusion, uh, the, the photothermal locking shadow graph method is a, a recently proposed method uh, implemented to overcome some limitation of the conventional uh, photothermal beam deflection technique. The photothermal beam deflection technique is an ancient technique that uh, was developed approximately 20 years uh, before. Mm. Um, one important thing is that, that the, the technique can be implemented using very simple uh, experimental apparatus. Uh, a simple webcam uh, is necessary. Uh, inexpensive diode lasers can be used to, to, to do this experiment. And also highly specialized, specialized hardware is not required. Uh, for example, uh, such as that incorporated in the thermographic camera uh, to work with this, with this testing. And, and because that, the testing is, uh, can be very useful for teaching uh, thermal wave physics, for example, at universities, high schools, etc. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks to Professor Marin for, for the presentation. Uh, as we will have uh, today also experimental session about this technique and also processing, uh, for sure uh, you will have a lot of questions and comments. And we have time for this. Please. Thank you very much for a very interesting and nice uh, lecture. I have, let's say, one question, uh, more complex. Uh, your samples were uh, solid, liquid, but uh, with uh, a huge homogeneity. What is going on when you have some inhomogeneities inside? For example, medium, as we saw in posters, uh, with particles, which are simple particles, or they are a kind of core shell because they have a small layer. And it is possible to detect, as uh, I know, very, very uh, small dimension in nanometers uh, or less than uh, range, how these properties uh, are reflected in this case, and it is, if it is possible to be detected. Yeah. Uh, what, what we measure in, in these techniques are effective values of the thermal properties of, of the sample. If we have a composite sample, a, a, non, a composite material or a non-homogeneous sample, uh, we measure the effective thermal diffusivity of the sample. 
Then to, to recover the thermal properties of each component of the sample, uh, you will use a, a theoretical formula that relates the effective thermal properties with the properties of the individual components. Uh, in some cases, that can be not possible. Okay? For example, if one component is in a very, very low amount, maybe it doesn't affect the, the effective uh, property. But the, the methodology is, is this. Uh, you obtain the effective parameter, and then uh, you try to obtain the the properties of the different phases uh, using some models. Thank you for the very nice presentation, sir. Uh, regarding the uh, multi-beam deflection technique or the single-beam deflection technique, I wanted to ask what would be the size of the spot that we could talk about? Because some perhaps we might have a sample which is quite flat, but it's got different thermal diffusivity on different parts of the sample. So uh, we could scan over it and, uh, for example, measure these... Um, thermal diffusivity on different parts of the sample. So what would be the spot that, the finest spot that we can measure that uh, uh, <coughs> thermal diffusivity for that? For example, we can say the thermal diffusivity over a one millimeter circle, two millimeter, or down to microns. Yeah, yeah. Hey, the, the model uh, describing the, the photothermal beam deflection technique uh, is a model for a, a point head source. Point source. So, so that uh, you must try to, to, to reproduce uh, in the experiment the condition uh, described in the theoretical model. So that uh, we must focus, you, you must focus the, the laser uh, so much as possible. No? Uh, on one micrometer, for example. Yeah. If you have a sample that is not homogeneous in, in the uh, scanner direction, yes. uh, then the, the method doesn't work. Okay? Must be homogeneous. So you, you can have inhomogeneities in, in the perpendicular direction, but in this direction, uh, this is a limitation of the method, of course, because you, you will obtain a different behavior of the probe beam for the different distance. Okay. Thank you, sir. Question, please, comments. Thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, I have one question. Uh, if I'm uh, correct, uh, when we are uh, we have a, a solid um, object. Uh, then uh, we see the uh, shadow graph. Uh, uh, in this method, uh, if we have, uh, uh, for example, uh, liquid or gas, uh, again we see the shadow graph and this technique works or not? No. The, the, the studied uh, sample uh, must be a solid sample in this method. Uh, this is a method for characterizing solid samples. But, but the sample must be immersed in, in a liquid. Uh, you can perform the experiment in air, of course. Uh, but the photothermal parameter uh, of air is uh, very smaller than uh, the photothermal parameter for liquids. So that if you immerse the sample into a liquid, we, we, what we do is uh, an amplification of the photothermal effect. Okay, but, but, but what you characterize is a solid sample. Uh -huh. uh, maybe you, you can, of course, you can use the same model. Uh, if you know the, the thermal parameters of the solid sample, you can also do the same experiment to characterize the, the liquid. Mm -hmm. okay? But what is useful is uh, the use of this method for solid sample characterization. 
Okay. Actually, you uh, measure the thermal uh, properties of the solid uh, object in uh, liquid or, for example, uh, gas uh, media. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Other questions, please? Comments? Let's thanks again, Professor Ernesto Marino Juárez. Thank you.